Hi everyone, welcome to another live artist interview at Petrov Gallery. My name is Yelena. Today we are going to have Kate Taylor join us. Um, we just did an interview with her on her page. We talked a little bit about the gallery side and that gallery aspect of what we do and how, how we sell art and how we work with the artists. And now we're gonna talk to Kate about her process a bit and her artistic um, side of selling art and making art. So, we're gonna now welcome Kate. She's about to join us. We just have to be patient with the technical side of live streaming, which always has some delays, I find. <laughs> It's taking its time to connect again. We seem to be having live technical issues. Unable to join. We'll try her again in a minute. There she is. <laughs> hey, sorry about that. That was so weird. Because I could, uh, I could ask for request to join, but then I couldn't see uh, see the Petrov Gallery thing. It was all grayed out. So like, I don't know. For some reason, I keep having this issue. No one else is having this live issue. <laughs> and it always takes a, a difficult, it takes a moment to connect. It's being weird yeah. with me. But. Well, and it's weird too, because it wasn't even actually a difficulty connecting. It was actually a difficulty in being able to accept your request. Oh, okay. So well, I don't you're know. Now. <laughs> yes, I'm here now. Sorry. <laughs> we don't need to talk about technical yeah. issues anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, thanks for joining us again. We had a fun little interview not too long ago on your page, and now we're doing it here. And now yes. it's my turn to ask you all of the questions. <laughs> That's a scary part. It's always easier to be on the other end of it. <laughs> it is. Well, actually, I, I prefer this way around. I was a little nervous to be on the interviewing side, interviewee side. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, as you, we've said before, Kate Taylor has been a part of the gallery for a number of years now. Her work is so popular and she, you're, I think you're just like an artistic staple in the city. You are <laughs> such a big part of the community. You help so many of the artists. I think so many of the new artists we even get in the gallery go, oh, Kate Taylor helped me with this. Kate Taylor recommended this to me. I oh, just, really? <laughs> yeah. That's good. <laughs> I love hearing how involved you are and how supportive you are of all the, the entire community and all of our artists. So why don't you start with telling us a little bit about how you got into yeah. it? Yeah, well, I, you know, I kind of, um, I mean, I think I'm here as well on the backs of people that came before me and were really helpful and were very generous with their advice and, and stuff. And so I feel like that's kind of part of, you know, of giving back. And I'm a huge fan of like, you know, the rising tide floats all boats. So if you help some yeah. artists, you help all artists. And I think that's yeah. a good thing for everyone. Yeah, yeah, I think that's brilliant. It's really beautiful too. Thanks. So <laughs> how did you how did you get into art, Kate? How did you start your amazing creative business? <laughs> um, well, my I have a bachelor of fine arts from Western. Um, my grandmother is a professional artist. My sister is an artist, so it wasn't actually that difficult to choose to go into art. And of course, I was surrounded with it all my life. And I, you know, love to paint. My major was actually photography originally. Oh, okay. I, I didn't know that. Well, because I liked, I like to play, sorry, I'm trying to figure it out. I like to play actually in the dark room, I kind of figured out. Like, I like that kind of um, part of just that bit of serendipity. You don't know exactly what you're going to get. You don't have total control over how the chemicals are going to react. Um, and so, sorry, I'm just going to sit here for a bit. And so I kind of like that part of it. And then when photography became digital, I just, it just for me didn't give me that same level of having to commit to something, you know, like you, you can, cause you can change it if it's digital. And so right. um, that's when I really started. Um, well, then I worked in marketing for many years and then kind of came back to it about 
I guess about 11 or 12 years ago now. Mm -hmm. And that was my sister, Helen Utzel, who just basically prodded me in the ass and said, you know, it's time. You keep talking about it. Do it. Sisters are <laughs> so, good for that. <laughs> they are, yeah. And I'm kind of a bit of an all or nothing kind of person. So if I'm going to do it, I don't step in gently. I just leap in you know, on the deep end full front. Yeah. That's a good skill to have. So do you, I didn't know that you had started out with photography. Do you find your photography, like original interest and skills influences your art today in any way? Uh, it does. I, I think that what happened is I realized is I, even as I look back on my old photography, that what I was really interested in is sort of shape and shape and color more than actual um, content. Like I, my stuff was never a photo essay of something. It was about interesting cracks on the sidewalk or, you know, and so, right. and so I think that some of that has kind of continued on within what I'm doing now. And I think that the, for sure the serendipity part of it with working on the birch panel, once the color's down, I can't pull it out. So I have to really mm -hmm. commit to it and I have to kind of go to it with full force and have the faith that, you know, it's going to work out. And, you know, sometimes it doesn't. I end up with a piece of yuckiness, which I then have to figure out what to do with because I can't pull it back and I can't right. overpaint it. <laughs> right. So you, what you love about your painting is the commitment to it. That's exactly what terrifies me about painting. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of um, really interesting and admiring to me to, to hear you say that that's something that you love about it because it, it's, it's like it's constant. It's, it is what it is and you can't change it. Um, I like that. <laughs> well, I, I actually am one of these people who actually does like change and uncertainty. Um, and so that's probably why I was an entrepreneur for many years and I like being able to do my own thing and kind of just having the faith to move forward and kind of, and it doesn't always work out either. Sometimes it's like a right. horrible, you know, crash and burn scenario, but um, at least I feel like I'm actioning myself to move forward and doing something different versus kind of sitting where it's kind of safe. Right. I guess. That's fair. So you have a very particular and unique technique of how you paint. Um, and we had a little workshop with you earlier in the year at the gallery where we that learned was fun. technique it was yeah. so fun got me back into painting <laughs> um and with that you kind of taught us that you actually mix your paint on the palette and i can even see in the pieces behind you mm -hmm. if you want to point a little bit more details to us yeah uh, so i yeah I'll, 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 I'll turn the camera <laughs> i'll turn the camera around here a bit yeah so basically um what i do actually i'm going to go in this one because this has actually got great wood grain so I get my panels made for me. So they have really nice wood grain. So you can see this one, it's got a very strong wood grain pattern. Beautiful. And so, um, and it's, that's also unpredictable because I buy my panels, panels so they have beautiful wood grain, but I don't always know what I'm gonna get and how it's gonna end up uh, translating right. because sometimes the grain absorbs more evenly. Um, and so then what I do is I go through and I mix my colors on the knife. So you can see, that's kind of any of them here. Mm -hmm. So the call and the point of that one is, um, like you can probably see here, the point of that yeah. really is to make each of the petals interesting in and of their own right. So I want those to be kind of little precious little pieces of joy, <laughs> I guess, uh, within themselves. Mm -hmm. I use a lot of metallics. Um, and so you can kind of, I don't know if, sure if you can see in the light, metallic paint yeah, we can see that as well shine. as, yeah, as well as liquid mirror. And then I add these little sparkly bits are actually mica, which is a natural stone that behaves a bit like glitter. So it catches the light, kind of like sunlight as, it, sunlight as it hits the water. Right, so it's a subtle kind of glimmer in the light. Yeah, um, and then in some cases I resin them. So you can see this piece down here is resin, the whole piece is resin, mm -hmm. um, and other pieces I don't. Sometimes what I do is, um, like this pink is of course pretty strong. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was finding it was, there was a too many colors so actually then I take a pink wash over top of the whole thing so then you can okay. kind of see that the pink has kind of created this tone over top of the pieces I see so how did you come to this technique how did you develop this and start working on it you know I think like everything it sort of um it sort of seems to evolve um and so for me it was a bit of um I discovered the palette knife at the same time I kind of realized how much I loved abstract work and with the palette knife, you just can't get fussy. Like you can't get those tiny little details into it. But there was also a part of me that when I first started out and the petals were all one color, I felt like it just wasn't sophisticated enough, but there also wasn't enough interest to kind of keep you continuing to look at the piece and finding something different and new each time. Right. And so 
then I sort of like mixed a couple of colors. And now I probably put, I don't know, something like seven or eight different colors on the knife. And then I move around the painting so it picks up pieces wow, from one area. On, on one little stroke. Yeah. And I wow. try to keep it not muddy. So the other thing, again, this is just my perverse nature, I think, is I also like to try and mix colors that are complementary on the knife. So normally, as you know, you mix the complementary colors, it becomes brown. I personally don't like brown, so I don't use brown in anything. But I like mm -hmm. the challenge of mixing those colors on the knife so they sit clean beside each other on the painting and then they kind of vibrate a little bit as complementary yeah. colors are want to do. Yeah, I mean, I think that's definitely where you can see your skill set because you're so good with color. Um, and that's the beauty of your pieces. You complement them so well, you work them into each other so well. And sometimes I even find with your work, I'm amazed by how you make two colors that I never would have thought go together <laughs> and you make them work so well together. I think that's really the beauty of your work. And, and that's where I see your skill shine the most. You're really amazing with color and you love working with color. It's obvious. I do. Well, you know, it's funny too, because I always say I'm you know, inspired by nature, which I totally am, but it's also just such an easy gimme because of course nature never worries about this flower doesn't go with that flower. Like they all go together right. and they all work. Like nobody looks at a, a flower meadow and kind of go, Oh, that, that purple flower doesn't work with the yellow, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? So I think that also just gives me the confidence to be able to kind of go, if nature's cool with those colors together, I think I can be cool with those colors together. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good way of looking at it for sure. And so your paddle series is kind of your signature, but we also have your unity mm -hmm. series, which we see one piece of behind yeah. you. So I'll go back when and I'll, you... I'll flip again. Mm -hmm. So when did you I... develop that one? I'm going to do a history. So this is actually my color field collection. And so color field was the first one I did. And that is um, very, tends to be very textural. These pieces typically tend to be large and on canvas. Once mm -hmm. I started working on the panel is when I really kind of discovered the wood grain and how much I loved it. And that was where the energy in motion uh, or the pedal series came from. Okay. Um, then I started working in what I called kind of my tranquility. And this is a similar pattern. So it's just using the side of the knife. Mm -hmm. And it's still mixing the colors on the knife, but it's a little bit more linear. Right. This is the technique you taught us in our workshop, right? Yes. Yeah. Right. And I tend to do a lot of the little treasures that are that size. There's a couple more down here. So yeah. my studio is a super, this is my home studio and it's kind of a mess because <laughs> most people don't yeah. come in here in the studio. We like a mess. Don't worry. <laughs> so then the Unity series kind of came actually from, I was doing a lot of traveling, especially, um, you know, in the U.S. and there was a lot of lack of unity, I guess. Like there were, there were a lot of people that were kind of, they were angry. There were, um, there was a lot of comments and maybe it was just the people I talked to. But I, I sort of felt like, you know, I needed to kind of really talk, talk more about how we can kind of blend colors and ideas and concepts into kind of a unity to create a more unified world. Like, I know I appreciate that's very simplistic, but that's kind of where that came from. And so mm -hmm. this piece here, which you'll love because it's black and white. <laughs> yes, that's my vibe. <laughs> uh, and it's got a lot of the iridescence. This one actually is called Heritage because my father's um, side is Estonian. And so the black and the blue is kind of Estonian colors. So okay, and that, that, little, that little hint of pink in there too that I like. <laughs> yeah, so that is actually called a color called interference. So it almost, mm -hmm. uh, it sort of, it really glows and it changes color depending on where the light hits it, which you can't see so well through the camera, but you can kind of really see in real life. I and then sometimes I like to do just these, just different size, like these kind of six by, or 12 by kind of 60, 12 by 72 inch pieces are kind of, fine. I like to work with different shapes too. I typically don't do a traditional three by four palette or piece. Yeah, I don't I know why. You're, you're probably the most versatile artist we have in terms of sizes. Um, when someone always asks us, I need this unique particular size, I go, Kate Taylor can do that. She can do every and <laughs> yeah. every size. I just um, did a, it was like 50 by 39 and a half. <laughs> Wow. wow. And then, and then of course they go right down to these, these little guys, like these little treasures. And so yeah, the little treasures are great, which we're having our small work show in February coming up. So we're going to be yeah. taking lots of those from you. I got quite a few. And these ones also for me, they, they actually, I don't actually carry a traditional sketchbook. Mm -hmm. um, and so for me, these are kind of my sketchbook. And oh, so I okay. work through, I work through different ideas and colors and patterns and stuff on the, on there. And so that sometimes kind of, I have, and I sort of have this weird thing where I don't like to leave paint on the palette. I paint in acrylic. So of course, if you leave it, it'll dry up. And so right. I will do these little ones with everything else that's left on my palette, which often are the colors that I don't love the best. And so that's sometimes where I end up with some weird color combinations. Yeah, it's just strange that way. 
That's really cool, actually. I, I like that story. But they always turn out really beautiful. Like, they're still such amazing little pieces. And it's interesting that you experiment with them that way. Yeah, that, it's kind of fun because you never know what other people like, too. Like, there are certain things that I might love, like you were saying before. So you also have to, it's interesting to have the challenge to paint for what other people are going to love within your own style. Definitely. I'm not going to compromise what I ultimately want to do. But, you know, sometimes it's fun to play with, I don't know, ochres and earth tones, which typically are not kind of my thing, right? I think it's good to Definitely. keep the mind stretched. Yeah. So what's, what's next? What are you working on now? Is, do you have anything to update us on and what, what we can expect to see, what you might bring to um, the gallery? <laughs> I don't know. Like, I'm thinking I'm, I haven't done a lot of Unity. I sort of started that collection um, and hadn't really fully explored it. And then sort of the energy and motion stuff really exploded. And so I became really busy with that. So I'd like to go back and do a bit more exploration of that. It's definitely, I have to be in a different mindset for it because it's very linear and the palette knife has to be kind of pulled across at different um, weights so that you kind of get that scumbling of color. Right. I have yeah, to be in kind can, of a more- You can definitely see that here in the piece behind me too, that sometimes it's a thicker layer and sometimes it kind of pulls. Yeah, and I like the fact that sometimes you get the little dots of individual color that are on the background that are, so it's not kind right. of a solid line. Um, and I find that I need to be kind of in a state of mind that's a bit more controlled and a bit more tranquil to do those than the energy and motion, which are just like, blah, 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 you know? which is a lot of energy and movement and going, going, going. <laughs> yeah. So I'm working on that. I've worked on a couple of trying to combine some of the combinations and uh, collections. In some cases, it's successful. In some cases, it's not. And the other one I'm actually working on, so I'm also just going to turn around here a little bit. Mm -hmm is um, I haven't actually named this collection yet, but I think that it's interesting enough to pull into a different collection. Yeah. So these were, again, these were some small ones. I had When I had extra paint on the palette, I'm like, well, I'm just going to throw them all into this kind of forest. So the yeah, largest I've seen I've, a few of the small ones in that size. I haven't seen a large one, I don't think. Because I haven't done a large one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the largest size I've done is, um, is about 12 by 12. And so okay. I have actually have a panel right now, which is... I'm trying to figure out if I can turn myself around again. Nope. Yes, I can't. You're going to have to just look at them. <laughs> um, I've got another <laughs> panel that is actually a partnership to this orange one. So it's probably 18 by 60. Um, and so I'm going to start to work larger and see if it's interesting. What I need to figure out is if it's going to be interesting enough larger or if it's just going to become too linear and formulaic. And that's what I have to kind of work on. <sighs> Sorry, I'm having obviously phone issues there we today. Go. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, that's so awesome. It's so great getting a little view. We love seeing behind the scenes. And I, I know this is your home studio and you have another one that has oh, more I'm, work. And I'm a studio hog, yeah. So I have my home studio and I was finding that um, because I'm ultimately an extrovert, I was missing the people. Uh, when, I had been, you know, when I was working in marketing, I did marketing and art for a while. And then when I gave up the, um, the marketing to be an artist full time, I missed the people. So I started Art Alchemy, which is um, basically a, a partner, not a partnership, but my sister has Art Alchemy out in Comox, Vancouver Island. And so I started Art Alchemy East here. And so there's six of us that share the studio space. Okay. And we just launched the Pirate Squared show on circular pieces. And then um, because of COVID, I've spent more time at the cottage. So I've just converted our cabin to my cottage studio. So I now have three studios. <laughs> oh, you are studio spoiled. <laughs> I know. And it's so funny because I say to my husband, it just isn't big enough. He goes, how much space do you need? I'm like, there's never enough space. <laughs> you know what? To be fair, you work in very large sizes. You need a lot of space. So. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. And I just finished one that was uh, 72 by 48, oh. uh, which was, yeah, I mean, it, it becomes the size, and because they're panels, they become really heavy, right? So it's like, doesn't really fit in my car, and, you know, barely fits up does, the stairs. Does that get really hard to resin? Did you resin that one? Or is that I didn't resin that. They didn't, they didn't want that one resined. I have resined that size. Um, wow. And it is a challenge because physically you have to lean over it. Plus, I paint um, flat, right? I don't paint on an easel, which means right. I actually have to physically be able to lean over it and be able to reach the center of the painting. Um, yeah, so. I, I could imagine, especially getting it like you're a master at resin, getting it so smooth and clean and in that kind of size, I could see that being definitely a challenge. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, I'm finding it's interestingly, the trend seems to be um, less resin as the pieces get larger. So right. um, I resin, like the little, the only ones I always resin are the little six by sixes because I think it just makes them more precious. Um, yeah. And then the other sizes, because the resin reflects a bit like a mirror in some places, it's the larger that gets, the, the more challenging that becomes sometimes. Right, harder to place in, in areas yeah. and spaces as well. That's fair. Yeah. 
Yeah, amazing. Well, thank you so much for giving us a little tour and, and some insight into your art process. Um, we love your work. Our clients love your work. <laughs> Good. We've been carrying you for so long. We can't wait to see what else you bring to us and have new for us. If anyone watching has any questions for Kate or for us, feel free to DM us. We're still open for curbside. We have a lot of Kate's little treasures, which are perfect holiday gifts. So go take a look online or give us a call and we can find the perfect color for you. There's so many colors and they're beautiful. So <laughs> well, thank, thank you so, you so much. Us. Oh, it's been great. I've been enjoyed being your guest. Yeah, it's been wonderful. I love, I love talking to you guys, even if it's through a screen. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. Person's better, but this is a good second best. <laughs> it is. It's a good second best. Yeah. Well, thanks to everyone who joined us and we'll see you next time for interviews with artists. Cool. Thanks, Kate. thanks so much, Yelena. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. I think you have to cancel me, right? <laughs>